We're going to take a look at Zentangle today. That is spelled Z-E-N-T-A-N-G-L-E, -E, Zentangle. And the quickest definition I can give is that it is a miniature piece of unplanned doodle that starts off with a small square space. Sometimes a few pencil guidelines are used, uh, but mostly it's done in black pen. They are done without any measuring tools because part of their beauty is the ability to capture their very individual, your very individualized mark on the paper. So there are no mistakes. Now, we talk about in class that there are no mistakes really. There are just directions that your art goes that you hadn't expected or you didn't necessarily like, but this is a really good exercise in that because if you don't like the shape you put down, you simply create a shape or a pattern around it. Um, however straight or not straight or unevenly spaced the lines are, um, that is the beauty of your hand and your hand alone. No one else can make marks the way you do. The beauty of Zentangle that I experience is that the format automatically gathers these marks into a contained space that makes them interesting to look at. This is a good exercise for those who rely on some image in the external world to start a piece of art or those who have a particular finished image in mind. Both of those characteristics would be me. So those of you who share that with me, uh, this is a good break from uh, controlling the process and being surprised at where it ends up. Um, and also kind of frees the brain from any rational thinking, gets us uh, out of the left brain, out of naming things and so forth. Um, and so in that respect, it's kind of a, a break from some of the hard uh, rational work that we've been doing with learning drawing fundamentals, which are important, but it's good to have a a balance there. Now Zentangle is a copyrighted process, so I'm not teaching you Zentangle because I'm not certified to do that. Um, I'm simply introducing it to you and I can show you how to get started. Uh, you'll see there are literally thousands of directions you can go with this. There's lots of books out there uh, by the Zentangle group and there's a website with lots of information on it if this is something that you want to continue with um, at a later point. So I'm going to start with, I have a template here so I don't have to do any measuring with a ruler. It's not even necessary to do uh, the template like this. You can simply, if you're waiting for the plane or something and you have a paper napkin, um, any semblance of a square will do. Um, but some of us are a little uncomfortable at trying to get a square square so I have these templates that I've made out of uh, cardstock and this will uh, get us started. I'll bring some of these to class and then we don't have to worry about that part. And then so I've done that with the pencil because when I'm finished my lines might not go all the way out to the edge and I might want to erase those so if I keep it light I'll be able to do that. So from now on, I'm going to use the pen because, again, I don't want to be tempted to erase anything. I want to uh, embrace whatever mark goes down there and learn to love it. So I'm going to subdivide this space with a kind of wavy, sort of intuitive, irrational line. And then I'm going to subdivide it again in a... Again, just something that where my hand, where my whatever is guiding my hand to go, I can go ahead and subdivide some of the bigger spaces. And they don't even have to be wavy lines. They can be straight lines to do this subdivision. But this is one, one of the things I think is so amazing about the Zentangle process takes away the fear of the white paper. If you've ever heard that term, artists will talk about standing in front of a blank canvas or a blank sheet of paper and freezing because they have no idea where to begin. So this gives a starting point that is very open-ended. So now I've divided, so I just keep subdividing as I, 
I don't know, feel I want to. And then at some point, I dive into one area and start doodling. And that's literally what it is. It's if you've ever been on the phone with a long phone conversation and you don't even know you're doing it, but you're sort of doodling on the note paper that you wrote down the person's phone number on or whatever. Um, that's what this is. So if you saw my doodles at such points, this is probably what they would look like. And at some point I end up with circles. I don't know why. I just enjoy the look of circles and I enjoy making them all different sizes intersecting into other shapes, even going outside my pencil borderline here, coming back, and then going to color in some of these spaces, color in some of the unspaces, in other words, the in-between what we would call the negative space or the in-between spaces from the, the shapes that I created. I don't care for that shape, so I'm going to subdivide that a little bit and maybe color that in. So I would just keep continuing to do this all the way around until I felt that it was done or I got bored with it or whatever. Um, Here's one that I did earlier with the same, beginning with the same process. And as I said, I kind of like these open spaces. I don't see that as unfinished. I see it as just an interesting contrast to the part where there's all kinds of little things going on there. So I will probably at some point erase those pencil marks. And as I said, this can be literally any shape, any direction, formal, unformal, that you can think of. Now I will show you one other process that's a little more what I would call formalized. Um, it's more on the pattern side, and some people really enjoy that look. It's not usually the direction I end up, but I very much admire um, some of the pattern things that come out of Zentangle, some of the people in our class do some amazing patterns. So this one, I'm going to subdivide. I'm going to do in half. And again, this if it's not exactly half, it doesn't matter at all to this pattern. And the lines are not exactly straight. And that's actually a good thing because that's how... That's my signature, sort of. That's how it goes down for me. So then I am going to subdivide these squares. And that's this is a little easier because that space is smaller. It's a little easier to determine where the midpoint is. Even so, that's a good exercise to learn how to do that. And then I'm going to break these into midpoints. So I basically have a grid here. Then I'm going to do a triangle. I'm going to repeat this all the way down. So I'm going to go quickly. If I were doing this uh, on my own, I would probably go a little more slowly. On the other hand, as I said, the irregularity of it. I mean, if I wanted a perfect grid and shape like this, I could do that on the computer. And I've already made a mistake, which is okay, because I did not intend to do this part in pencil. I intended to stop after I had the pencil border in. So I'm just going to go back and do this with the pen. It's very hard to talk while I do this because it is so meditative, um, which is part of its, how it got created. And it really, 
re really um, works that way. It's um, the language part of my brain is just not wanting to function. Okay, so now I'm going to color in these. 